hey guys and welcome back to my channel happy saturday i'm so glad you guys could come welcome to tonight's live Woo! so this is gonna be a good tutorial i did a little like um whatever you call it like a uh like a poll on facebook and instagram you guys picked this particular image so this is basically what we're going to be doing today and if you guys are new around here my name is danielle i'm the artist behind creative girl of color and welcome i'm so glad you guys are here yes if you like this sort of content be sure to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell for all notifications in this tutorial i'm going to be showing you guys how to paint this image down here i've already printed out my image Everything I'm using is down in the description box below, as well as I will link the website for this particular royalty-free image that I'm going to be using for tonight's tutorial. So you guys can head over there to that. And let me log in a little bit so I can hear you. Okay, so I'm checking my mic. Check one, check two. Oh, let me bring it down a little bit. Wait a minute, let me adjust my mic, you guys. Hey everybody. Hey there, London. Okay, I adjusted my mic a little bit. All right, so let's kind of get down into the business of it. So this is, I'm using an 8 to by 10 canvas. And you guys can use any, you can utilize any type of canvas that you feel like you want to use. You can actually, this will be transferable actually over to an 11 by 14 as well as maybe a 16 by 20. You would just have to kind of adjust things as you go adjust maybe the fish the little coral and things like that i'm going to be teaching you guys how to paint the ocean tonight all the colors and everything i'm going to be using is down in the description box below as well as social media tips tricks and all types of activities please let me know down in the comments if you can hear me well and everything looks good i would really appreciate it you guys I have um, acrylic paint that I'm going to be using tonight. You can use, utilize any acrylic paint that you're comfortable with. That's going to make things easier for you guys. If you love my content, don't forget to check out my Patreon for exclusive activities like oil painting and art challenges and tips and tricks and even art coaching. So definitely check out my Patreon if you would like to support my channel. Alright, so I printed out my image. This is going to be the image for this week. And this is the, actually the image that we're going to be doing next week. Right? So this is going to be next week Saturday. Maybe next week Saturday or maybe next week uh, Friday. I haven't picked the days. You guys can comment below and let me know what you think about it. I'm just using a regular paper plate tonight and I have my water out and my rags and stuff like that. I'm actually going, I actually picked up some beautiful artist grade acrylic paint down at the local art store that's near me, Plaza Artist Materials. 
and I picked up some some fluid acrylics and I wanted to try it out kind of tonight this is just some of the colors that I'm going to be using. I actually absolutely love um, Golden. Golden is a, a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous paint. They make quality pigments. Artist colors are totally different from student grade. But I'm also going to be using student grade. You can also utilize craft paint if you want to. Here is, I'm putting out my colors. Colors, colors, colors. And you know I got to put out my colors while i'm here with you guys so that because it's acrylic paint i don't want it to like dry up on me i'm just laying out a little bit of oh whew. it would make sense to kind of open it up right <laughs> it would make sense to open it up i should have did that beforehand huh that would have been good right that would have made much more sense. Ew. Now it's going to be like all over my, um, this is just some quinacridone magenta that I'm laying out. And you can see it's like really fluidy. You know what I'm saying? It's really fluidy. So you want to be careful with this. This is not like a heavy body paint. And you'll probably only need a little bit. I don't even know if I'm going to use it, but you know what? I might use it, so it's kind of good. And you can see the quality of, of artist-grade paint is totally different than student-grade because even the color looks totally different. It's like highly saturated kind of colors. And of course, Murphy's Law... This thing would decide that it doesn't want to open up for me, huh? Murphy's Law. Hmm. All right, let me grab some scissors. Because I need to kind of puncture this. get it to open up the reason why I think I wanted to to dry I mean dry huh to try the fluid acrylics is because I'm thinking about the flow capacity I wanted to be able to like flow good and stuff like that all right so this is ultramarine blue you can see how dark and rich these colors are because, again, these are um, artist grade colors. Putting out some phthalo blue. As you can see, the consistency of that is much different. This is a heavier body paint. And I'm using my golden white. This is also an artist grade color. My golden white paint. Titanium white. I hope I linked this down below. But anyway, this is our image. And, you you know, as you can see, I'm just going to put in my, at this point, I'm just going to do my background, my undercoat, my underpainting. That's what it's called, the underpainting. I'm going to start with the underpainting, which is the blues and stuff like that. And I'm just going to add a gradient of different blues. And you seem to have a lot of light going down the middle. And I've util I'm utilizing this small 8x10 painting to, for to, the purposes of tonight's tu tutorial. I can't even talk. Tutorial. Right? I'm utilizing that. Uh, 
Hey guys, so how's everybody doing tonight? How's everybody doing? Let me know down in the comments. What do you guys have going on? There's so many crazy things going on in the world right now. Like, I swear, we need this break, you guys. I swear we do. Somebody was telling me before, like, in the comments that they didn't, they, they wanted to see me kind of mix my paints together. Because I wasn't mixing it on camera. So I'm just going to show you every single thing. <laughs> For those of you newbies out there that, that are not really sure. And I'm just going to hit it with some quick, I'm going to take, I'm using a flat brush. This is my favorite brush. Uh, it is a silver um, ruby satin brush, number 20. All right? Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, do you see it? All right, so I'm getting a little bit of ultramarine, a little bit of ultramarine, and I'm taking a little bit of phthalo. Now, remember, you guys, um, I already wet my brush. You should always wet your brush beforehand because this is acrylic. And I am mixing my favorite mixture is ultramarine blue and phthalo blue. I love it. It's an absolutely rich, beautiful color. Yeah? Are you guys following me? And I am also going to hit it. You know what? I'm going to actually pull out pull out some cerulean blue also. Hopefully we can we we will only be going like an hour tonight, you guys. And it won't drag on to death. <laughs> but who knows? Anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that's my favorite mixture. Cerulean blue, and look how beautiful that blue is. Like, it's like, it's gorgeous, right? But with phthalo blue, you got to be very careful because it is a potent color. And it overtakes everything. Even after you use this and you wash your brush out, you should probably change your water. That's what I recommend. Okay? So I'm just trying to get somewhat of an even mixture. I'm actually doing more ultramarine blue than I'm doing phthalo. And ultramarine blue is a cool color, so it has a lot of purple in it. So, But I actually want it to be a little bit of a deeper purple. I actually wanted some phthalo green in this, but I can't find my phthalo green, so you guys won't be able to see that tonight. Not tonight, baby. Oh, also, I'm going to be doing a lot of singing. So, get ready for the show tunes. Okay, so I'm putting on some Dox Diox purple. It's just a really rich, beautiful purple, you guys. And I'm using the regular liquid tech. Let me get a little bit of that because that's a really powerful color as well. And you don't need a lot of that. Usually I use medium, but I'm not going to use any mediums tonight because um, I don't I don't want this thing to take forever to dry. Woo! Take forever and ever. And I'm going to hit it with a little bit of white. Now, Artist Color Titanium White, you don't need a lot of it because it is a very powerful white. Like, it will actually overtake everything if you actually add too much white. And I don't want too much white. I want, I'm, and I, I dipped a little bit of water in there, too. See, so as you can see, that lightened it up quite a bit. Just with that dab of, uh, you know, and I'm adding a little more ultramarine. I just wanted a hint of white to kind of give me a lighter value. And this is just a regular canvas. So, I wouldn't like, you know, go out. And I'm just doing a side sweeping, sweeping motion with this. Like, it's not that serious because this is just the first coat. And remember what I always say, that acrylics is all about layers, you guys. If you feel your brush starting to drag, you want to move quickly. If you feel your brush starting to drag, you want to go ahead and dip it in a little bit of water. Okay? Look at that blue. It is gorgeous, baby. Gorgeous. I'm going to get a little bit of Diox Purple added to the sides right here. Because in the reference photo, you can see that the sides are quite a bit darker, okay? 
And see that look at that dark purple. That thing is like trying to take over. I actually wish that I had my um phalo blue, but I don't. I'm gonna get a little bit of dip of water because this stuff is starting to drag. But you don't want to add too much water because if you add too much water, I'm going back into my uh ultramarine blue. If you add too much water, it will break down the polymer chemical compounds of the painting and you uh of your paint. And you really don't want to do that, you guys. And I'm going back up, back up. And I'm actually getting to my cerulean. Cerulean is a beautiful color also. That's like a warm color. And I'm going to add a little bit of that up there. Yeah? Going up the middle. And that's going to give me a little bit of a lighter tone. Because remember, we have like a ray of light. I think it's like a ray of light or something. That's like coming down. So I want to make this middle part a little bit lighter. And my painting is actually starting to drag. So I'm going to go back into my water. Because I don't want this thing dragging and getting crazy. Again, don't worry about this first layer. Because this first layer is what it is. It is an underpainting. You want to do lots of layers on this, you guys. Lots of layers, you guys. Hopefully, those of you in in um on Facebook or on on Instagram took some time to utilize the um the reference photo that I put up. Now, this is artist grade blue. You can see how rich it is. It's like gorgeous, gorgeous. Now, remember, acrylics, you, you got to be really patient with acrylics because they tend to go through like stages of like hideous, ugly, da 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 da, right? Alright, so we got our little first layer down. And that should be good. Since we got our little first layer down. Yes, the color is very pretty, London, right? The color is very gorgeous. This is a beautiful blue. It is like, um, you know, the light of your life. It is a beautiful blue. Absolutely gorgeous. Yes, yes, and yes. Okay, this ultramarine is like giving me life. And then if you add a little phalo, phalo is a pretty color too. But remember, those are di depending on the type of blue that you use, you're going to get different effects in your painting. So I'm kind of waiting for this thing to kind of um, dry up a little bit and get its life together. And I'm going to wash out my brush while I'm waiting. And then we can kind of look over the reference photo and talk about the reference photo. This water, if you guys actually see this water, this water has been overtaken by the blue. This is why I say when you're dealing with phalo blue and rich blues, quinacridone, um, phalo greens, those type of colors will overtake everything on your painting. Ooh. I mean, uh, overtake everything pretty much. Your painting, your water, your clothes, your fingers. Okay? And you're going to be out here looking crazy. Yes, indeed. So hopefully you guys can... Are you guys hearing me good? I want to make sure this thing is actually working properly. Okay. Yeah, it seems like it's good. Okay, so let's look at our reference. All right. So, 
a reference. Now we got to think about the perspective. Oh, it's a slight echo. Okay, it's probably because uh, I got my thing going on. Let me turn it down. Thanks, babe. So yeah, um, w let's think about our reference photo. When you look at a reference photo, when you're doing things from reference, you want to think about perspective. You want to start. You want to also think about just like rules of composition sometimes or whatever, right? But we're not going to really go over the rules of composition right now. We're going to just think about how to break down the reference photo and get our lives together so we're not stressing out over the situationship, right? So we have a little bit of light coming here. And we want to think about, like, how far down is our fish? Because if we go about, hmm... When I think about it, I don't want to, like, um, measure it out with a ruler because people may not know, right? So just think, use something to measure out how far down you need to go, right? So you probably want to go almost a little half, further than half down to where your fish is. And your fish is going to be your focal point. It seems to be the focal point as well as... These little, uh, whatever you call them things, the little, uh, like leaves and trees and bush and shrubberies or whatever that's over here is like the little focal point. And then we have our little fishy or whatever. And since I have an 8x10 canvas, so I want to think about where is, you know, where is he going to be on this 8x10 canvas? Where is he happening? So when I sit there, he's about a half of a finger length, right? So I would transfer that onto my canvas. He's in the middle of the canvas. He is my focal point. So I'm going to transfer that onto my canvas. He's a half, he's half of my finger length, right? So he's about right here, pretty much, right? This is where he is, okay? And this is where, so this is what you want to think about. You want to start transferring the information that you're seeing from your reference photo on to your canvas that's a good way to do it is to just start measuring things out we know that our leaves and shrubbery goes way way up almost to the top of our picture so basically if i want to do my leaves my leaves are going to go almost up to the top of my picture whereas my fish is going to be in the middle okay and this is almost dry i'm going to hit it with a second layer because matter of fact of course Murphy's Law, the heat want to come on. Uh, let me scoot on down to the heater. And turn that off. Because Murphy's Law, right? Alright, hold on you guys. I'm trying not to put too much static on you. that of course the heat because we're in the east coast and it's mad cold so of course the heat want to act up and start pumping because it's brick out here <laughs> it's brick out in these streets so hopefully i'm not giving you guys too much static i'm sorry about that okay so now let's move on here let's go back to I'm going to put another layer now on this layer. I'm actually going to be concentrating on what my reference photo actually looks like, which is I have some dark bits here, right? You can see the darkness and I have some dark bits on the side, like a vignette type of situation. And then in the middle is where all my light is. So that's where I'm going to be concentrating at at this point trying to get that effect because I got my first layer down because remember I said we're not we're not going to worry about excuse me we're not going to worry about that first layer like that 
You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Okay, so let's get started with I'm gonna get a little bit of I'm gonna actually put out some it's called burnt umber. I mean not burnt umber, it is raw umber. It's kinda like a brown color. Right? So I'm gonna get out a little bit of that by Windsor and Newton. Cause I wanna actually get like this brown. The brown combine oh let me mix it right here. Combine the brown and look, my color just dried up on me right there. Oh, no. See, I didn't even know this stuff dries so quick. See, the other one, the, the thicker body one, it doesn't dry like that. Oh, oh, that's disappointing. That's so disappointing. All right, so I'm going to put out a little more. I'm actually just going to drip it right here. Come on, Golden. Y'all too expensive to be drying up on a gal. Alright, so as you can see, when you mix a little bit of burnt umber or raw umber, raw sienna, any type of dark brown color, I'm going to add a little bit of purple to it. When you add that with your ultramarine blue, a little bit of phthalo blue, you know, I got to be extra. I got to be complicated with it, right? When you add those things together, it gives you a very dark value of blue. So I'm going to do that. And I'm actually going to, since this is dry already, and I'm going to dip a little, I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit of water. Just to get it lubricated here so I have my dark value. And I'm going to start over here. And you see how dark that is right there? If I have some time, for those of you that was interested in learning how to do um, water bubbles, if I have time, I will definitely try to do some water bubbles with you guys um if I have enough time now you see where our layers come into effect here yeah so we got this and that da -da -da -da. this is where our layers come into effect so I just put that dark version over there then I'm going to come in with some cerulean blue, a little bit of phthalo blue, right? A little bit of phthalo blue, cerulean blue is this lighter blue here. And I'm going to get me some white. Because we have those light rays in the middle. So bam. Look how light that is. But see, I don't want it to be that light. And see what you you guys are probably freaking out. Like, oh my god! It's too light! But don't worry about it, right? I got my rag over here. I'm going to wipe it off with my rag. And I'm going to get... Go back into my dark value. I didn't... And there you go, you know? And then I'm just going to kind of start trying to blend this stuff out. If you feel your brush starting to drag, you guys, get a little bit of water. I just added a little bit of phthalo blue to kind of blend that stuff out. 
so it's not crazy. And you see I'm getting a beautiful kind of gradient. Don't be afraid to get in there. Slap the paint on there. Don't be afraid of it. Paint is your friend. Now this side, again, we're going to go back in with this dark value. And I'm working real quick so that my paint does not dry literally because it literally wants to dry while it's on the palette. Combine with a little bit of raw umber to darken my value up to give me somewhat of a chromatic black. Yeah? Like for real. Chromatic black. And there we go. And that's too dark. So again, don't panic when you feel like something is too dark. Don't start to panic. Because it's looking gorgeous. Yeah? And I'm all over the place. Now I'm going into my phthalo blue as well as the cerulean blue. And all these colors are going to kind of blend and mix with each other. And remember also, don't worry because sometimes, I mean not sometimes, but all the time, I'm going up, 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 up. Um, acrylic dries really dark, right? So since it dries really dark, and see, look at that. That looks very pretty. It looks gorgeous. looks very gorgeous right now, yeah? I'm happy with it. Let me go back in. Re-put in my value here. And you get those different variations just with blue and um, burn umber. You can always take your brush and kind of fan over these hard lines. Because we don't really want these hard lines. Right? Now you can see as the more we add <clears throat> So now we have this ray of light coming down the middle, right? We have that beautiful ray of light coming down the middle, and I'm actually going to go over, and I'm going to actually extend that ray of light over here. We have this beautiful kind of ray of light going down the middle, because this is where our focal point is, this is where our fish is going to be, and all that jazz. I'm going to actually add a little more white in there. To make sure you can actually if you're afraid of this you can actually just do the whole thing and um and blue and then go back in with do the whole thing in blue and then go back in with um some zinc white and then you can do your ray of light over that blue. But you want to do at least two or three layers of your different variations of blue before you start adding your image. I like to do pretty much my whole underpainting before I actually add my image on top. Getting a little bit of fuzziness here too. Let me see. I can hear the fuzz, you guys. Can you hear fuzziness?
Well, hopefully it's not too fuzzy and too crazy. <laughs> but I'm getting the echo though. Oh, okay, so we're kind of going to wait for this to dry. This would be a good time for you guys to take a break if you need to take a break. And kind of let it dry. Or you can take a blow dryer and blow everything down and get it together, right? But, I mean, it should be dry enough to where you can go in. This is actually going to darken as it starts to dry like acrylic does. Because that's, that's the nature of the beast when it comes to acrylic. Is it actually starts to uh, dry. I mean, it actually starts to darken as it dries. So that's the beauty of that. Okay, so what I did is I got some, you can get some chalk. because You can get some chalk and things like that. I actually got some chalk. I'm going to use some chalk on to, to trace my image on. And... Let's see, you can use chalk. I'm using regular kids chalk for this to trace my image on. Um, but you can also use a pencil. You can use a white charcoal pencil, which I think I linked below. Um, and I actually don't have it to show you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Jackpot. You can actually use a white charcoal pencil, which is this. And I'm using some regular yellow chalk. And I'm going to use that to kind of trace on my image and get that together as uh, when this thing dries and does all that jazz. Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. Now, the colors that I'm going to be using, hopefully you guys... Oh, I forgot to link this below. But this is going to be part of, since it is in the reference photo, you have those high greens, those really light, 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 um, high chroma greens. I'm going to be using light green permanent. I always use this in my landscapes or any type of uh, floret type of painting or anything that has a lot of greens in it. I always use um, light green permanent. And most acrylic brands, even I think Craft Paint has light green permanent they may not call it light green permanent but that's what it is um so yeah i'm going to use light green permanent i'm also going to be using uh hmm i'm going to be using some yellow yellow different yellow I actually picked up this. I actually like this brand, so I picked this brand up yesterday. It's the Windsor & Newton. I, I actually love this brand, and I love this type. So, I actually picked this, some of this stuff up yesterday. It is Windsor & Newton Galleria Acrylic um, Series 1. And the art store that I go to it seems to be the only one that carries this particular, um, like, size or whatever. So, I'm not sure why, but... Okay, I need to see if I can figure out what is going on with my sound, you guys. Are you guys hearing that fuzzy sound on your end? Because I'm hearing some sort of, like, weird... Hold up.
sorry, I'm gonna play around with this sound. Yeah, and I'm still hearing that weird sound. Maybe you guys can hear me better now. Oh, that's what it was. Oh, my God, you guys. You would never believe what it was. I had, like, another phone. <laughs> it was another phone that was near my phone. And my phone was kind of picking up the reception and the weirdness. Oh, my God, you guys. I know you're like, what the hell is going on with her sound? I'm so sorry. That was absolutely insane. And that was unacceptable. I didn't even know it was picking up the um the little what you call it from cuz I knew my microphone wasn't bugging like that. I was like, okay, something really going on here. All right, so good. Now, I'm sure the sound is way better. Oh, my God. Like, all this time, I'm like, what in the hell is going on? What is going on, YouTube? Why is my, my thing doing that? Like, it was bugging. It was really bugging out. Okay, so this thing is drying and getting its life together or whatever, right? So, now... Let me give you guys a little tip while we still drying here cuz I have I don't have my um whatever you call it my uh uh blow dry nearby so I can't blow dry right now. It'll it'll be dry in a minute. We just be patient. So what it is here when you dealing with um the reference photo if you're going to be trying, if you guys are not really good with drawing, you don't really know or you don't you don't know where to start or how to even deal with it. I would also recommend that you, if you have a chance to kind of print out your images, you could take your print out, get some transfer paper. You would lay your transfer paper down onto your canvas and then you would go in and lay your image on top of your transfer paper you want to have the shiny piece of the transfer paper down on your canvas you would lay your image on top and then you would go in and you would you know trace whatever you need to trace no it is not cheating you know it is what it is until you get used to drawing and figuring things out now however do i recommend that you guys draw and get that stuff together yes hell yes i i really encourage you guys to draw and really do that stuff because it's ultra important it is an integral part of being an artist that you have that sort of skill underneath your belt to draw and things of that nature so I definitely recommend that you you uh you know have that skill so to speak so yeah now definitely don't start drawing on your canvas until this is absolutely dry. And I might even have to get up and actually... Can somebody pass me my um, blow dryer over there, please? Um, yeah, I might actually have to dry this because it wants to take all day to dry right now. Make sure that your, your background, your underpainting is actually dry before you go ahead and start putting images on because... It's just going to make everything muddy. Thank you. 
It's going to make everything muddy. I got my blow dry, you guys. Ow. Yes. It's going to make everything muddy. So you want to definitely get your blow dryer out. And, um, I'm so sorry about the sound, you guys. I know y'all, um, people are going to be like, what is, what's wrong? Like, the first 20 minutes is going to be sound. <laughs> The sound is going to be crazy for the first 20 minutes. People are going to be like, okay, I'm about to log off. She mad bootleg. <laughs> Alright, I got my blow dry. I'm about to plug that in. Woo! We're going to pray to the blow dry gods because... You know what? I'm going to have to plug it in somewhere else because... Sometime... When I plug this blow dryer in... Sometimes it wants to start, um, this thing wants to try to blow my lights. So, I'm going to have to get up under my desk. Woo! I'm too fat for this. <laughs> I'm too fat, y'all. Yeah. Woo! All right, and we're back. Alright, now, I had to plug it into the regular outlet because if I put it into my other outlet, it's going to blow all my lights. You want to put it at your lowest setting. So I'm just hitting it with a little bit of low heat. Because I need this to dry. I need it to get its light together because I can't wait. And you want to dry it like five minutes, whatever. Hopefully you guys are not getting too much static from this blow dryer. But you definitely want to dry your stuff before you go ahead and start adding your images. If your thing looks too shiny, it's just not going to be, a, you're not going to be able to draw on your canvas if your thing is wet. So just hit it with the blow dry. Don't put it too close. You want to have it on low heat. Because if you apply paint to it and your canvas is hot. It's going to warp your canvas and cause your paint to start running. It's just going to be a mess. Absolute mess. And be careful of your palette because you definitely don't want to be drying your paint while you blow dry them. And remember, your your paint is going to dry as acrylics dry to get darker. They start to shift in color. It's going to be totally a different thing if you're using um, oil. Alright, so that should be good. If your painting... Whoa. Your painting is no longer... Um, shiny you should be good to go you should be good to roll at this point all right now um so remember what we said was the fish was about um let me put my image up so i can see what's going on colors colors i don't know why i'm always singing that song so put your reference in front of you. Okay. It has like a weird pot down here that I'm not going to put in there. And remember, you have you are the artist, so you have artistic license. You can actually even change the colors, the blues in this painting if you wanted to. 
Um, I, it's some of the stuff in here I'm just not going to do. So that's just not happening. I'm actually going to... Uh, I'm just going to rough this in because as I paint things in, right? As we paint things in, I'm putting the bark in right now. The little broken down tree or whatever it is. I'll put that in. And I'm using, like I said, a little of my little kids chalk, which you can find at any dollar store. You know what I'm saying? You got to um, try to do everything you can to uh, save some money. Okay. It has like these little weird whatever barnacles on it. Again, you could actually, and you know what, down here, I think it's like a tree down here for real. Now that I think about it, even though you don't necessarily have to do that, you don't have to add that tree, you know? Trees, lives, okay? And it's like a weird flower or something over here. I don't know what that is. But again, you don't have to add every element you see in there. You know, you add things that you feel is going to make your painting look pretty. You don't have to add every single thing. Like, it's really not that serious, you know? All right. So then I have my little trees. And you know what, for this, I'm going to actually use my, um, what's the name? My little pencil. And I'm doing, like, little diamond shapes, because these are, like, little leaves and stuff. And really, the beauty with leaves and all of that jazz, you don't have to be, like, you know... A thousand percent accurate here. You could just, you know, do your thing. And I'm actually rubbing out my damn, my darn, what's the name? Again, I'm just roughing things in so I can make sure I know where things belong, where things happen, where things are. Stuff like that, right? As well as, let's get a little fish shape in. Again, the fish is only about from here to here, right? And it's actually parallel to this thing right here, whatever this is. Uh, my little tree bark, yeah? actually parallel parallelogram okay and you could also move things around I'm just giving me like a rough guide on Where my little fishy is going to go. I kind of want him to have like this weird da 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 da. And don't worry about your chalk marks because. The good thing with chalk marks is that. Um, it'll come out with the paint. So I definitely wouldn't worry about it. 
And then you have like this little indent right here where his head is. And then you have his little eyeball. You got my eyeball. Where's my eyeball? And then he has like these little fins or whatever that is coming down. You know? And then we have these little tendrils of things, right? Because um, remember, you have these little leaves or trees or whatever it is um, that's coming up right here. So I'm actually going to add that in. Because you have one right there. So take your time to kind of draw this stuff out. And then you have some stuff here. And you have your little leaves, you know. Leaves, you could do like little diamond shapes or whatever you call them. Ovals. You see, you do your little ovals right there. And then you like you gotta do them in different shapes. You gotta do them in different shapes. Give them some.